Good morning, everybody. It's your boy Pearl Woods. It's your boy Trill, Santiago. Call me what you want to call me. But uh, don't call me weak, because this is my pretty much daily driver right now while the VTX is in the shop. Uh, my Royal Star Venture, it's a 1300. It's a V4, sounds beautiful. Hold on, I'll let you guys hear it. Waiting for connection. Okay, and that's my Bluetooth connector. Um, this is my daily driver, my Royal Star Venture 1300. And the first question I get from a lot of uh, riders, whether it's sport bike riders or just random people in general, is how the hell do you manage all that weight? Um, I mean, this bike's a 900, 950 pound bike. When I got the stuff in there, it's a thousand pound bike. When I got somebody on the back, it's a 1150 pound bike, you know, 1200 pound bike. So, and I only weigh 130 pounds. I'm taking off my jacket to show you my uh, very uh, neptuous forearms. But how do I do it? How do I do it? How do I do it? And why do I do it? <laughs> well, we went over this kind of in the last video on why cruisers are the best vehicles ever. And I figured I'd make another video that has a similar uh, engagement outreach so that you guys stay interested. I also have another video coming out of me riding the Izzy the VTX uh, around a little bit, seeing that there is gas in my air filter. If you guys see that video, you guys will see that video. I'm trying to hide my mic from the wind. It's uh, windy, it's about 54 degrees. Uh, it's October, baby, October, baby. So, why, why and how? First off, reasons as to why the weight isn't as scary as the number might sound. Um, when you think of an adventure bike or a sport bike or a sport touring bike, your seat is up here, like your seat is much, this is a great representation because on a sport bike, you're sitting a lot higher than you are on a cruiser. That makes a lot of sense. A lot of people know that. Yes. Well, the weight of an engine on a sport bike, ow, it's hot. The weight of an engine on a sport bike is also going to be much, much higher. And on a cruiser, not only are you sitting lower, but the engine is much lower. And that's pretty straightforward, right? So when you take a leg over the machine and you pick it up, suddenly that 900 pounds doesn't feel all that heavy anymore because your weight is so much lower on the bike here. Um, you're only going to be feeling the weight when you're going slow. When I'm making a slow turn, I'll go make some slow turns around this parking lot to show you that even after, you know, almost 12 and a half thousand miles of riding this thing uh five months it's still a struggle sometimes i mean getting the weight is is it's pretty heavy especially when i have somebody on the back especially when i have all my my baggage loaded up um it can be a very it can be a very very uh heavy bike but you learn to manage it as you grow and as you get better at riding and whatever the case may be and you know it, it doesn't it scares you on the ride home, that's what I'll say, because my first bike, as you guys don't know, was the VTX 1300. Uh, that was about a 600 pound bike, a uh, 650 pound bike maybe, with fluids and stuff like that. Again, I stepped up another 300 pounds. I didn't gain any weight. Okay, well, let's. I'm gonna be honest with myself, I gained a little bit of weight, but not enough uh, in the muscle department, more in the stomach department. So, yeah, learning to ride this bike has been a little spook. And especially, um, I want to give you guys some tips for riding heavier bikes and, you know, what you can do to manage your weight better. Uh, I am not an MSF instructor. In fact, I am not a great uh, <laughs> teacher of riding in general. I haven't taught anybody to ride yet. I, I want to learn how to teach people how to ride. Uh, I know, obviously, I know how to for the most part. I mean, as you guys have seen, this bike's been to Canada. This bike's been pretty much to every state in the Midwest multiple times because I'm too lazy to go further. Um, it's been everywhere and I've loved it and it's been great. But I want to give you guys some tips on how to ride a heavier motorcycle uh, if you guys aren't familiar. Um, first off, the first thing I want to teach you guys is parking. Now, you have a heavy bike, right? And you're stopping and going at a... Here. Actually, you know what? We'll move the camera over here so I can show you guys a little better. This is your parking spot. 
Now you guys are going to say, Santiago, why are you teaching me how to park a motorcycle? I've driven a car. Well, parking is very important with a heavy bike because you want to make sure that you can get the damn thing out. I don't care how strong your legs are. If your legs aren't strong enough, you're not going to pull this out. And I've actually done this a few times when I first started riding where I'd pull my bike into a spot because, you know, if you're an adult, you should be reversing your bike into every parking spot. I've had situations where I've been unable to do that. Or I've had situations where I have pulled my bike in and not been strong enough to pull it out. So I want you guys to understand realistically that most times when you're parking your cruiser, you want to make sure you're on a, on a piece of land, on a flat level of land or a level of land in which you could reverse the bike back out of. Um, as for this road here, we are at an incline right here. It's not a very steep one, but it is an incline. So I'm going to embarrass myself and try to reverse this bike. Strong enough to do it. We're going to skip all this. So I'm going to pull my bike into the spot right here. If I go around, big old loopsy turvy. There you go. I'm going to pull my bike into this spot right here. And the reason why I pulled it in from the front and not from the back, as, you, as, you, as I just told you guys, you guys should always be doing, is because we are at an incline. And at this incline, I am not strong enough to pull the bike back. Okay? I'm admitting it. I'm admitting it for you guys. I'm not strong enough to do it. Um, when you're going up and down grades, that's very, very important. Ugh, because <coughs> you don't want to um, you don't want to be in a spot where you get stuck and you need help pushing it back and you can't because I'll tell you from personal experience that is a scary situation and it sucks now another thing that comes in addition to parking is the fact that your motorcycle is very 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 heavy it's actually able to go through this dirt and this grass here. I don't know if you guys can see me. This dirt and this grass, your kickstand is, has enough weight on it to be able to actually go through uh, coarse dirt or mud or rocks and stuff like that. So when you're parking on any surface, always make sure that you have something you can lean your bike onto. Do I have an example of one? Yes, it's a really bad example. This, <laughs> this is my... Here, I'll get a little closer for you guys. This is my NOCO Boost. This is what I would use in an attempt to jumpstart my bike in case the battery dies. It's a hard material. I wouldn't recommend this. I would recommend finding a piece of wood somewhere. That's what you should do. But because this is a hard surface, if I place it on the dirt and place my kickstand on there, you're not the kickstand's not going to be able to push the whole thing through the mud or dirt the same way that the kickstand itself will. So make sure guys, when you're parking on any sort of land that's not, uh, when you're parking on any sort of land that's not concrete or cement or asphalt, even a actually asphalt does it too. I've seen, a, I've seen a, a case where it was like a 110 degree day and I was riding out with some guys and his kickstand, when he put it down and came back an hour later, his kickstand was in the asphalt. How did he get it out? He didn't. <laughs> we had to remove the kickstand, ride it home, lean it up, and buy another one. It's not fun. It is not fun at all. And so make sure that when you're parking on surface, you know what surface you're parking on. You know that you have the ability to park on that surface without your kickstand digging through. Because again, these are thousand pound machines being weighted down by a kickstand, you know, the size of your finger. So make sure that you have the parking in space when it comes to a heavier motorcycle. I just wanted to preface with that because that's the most important point. I don't hear people talking about when they're talking about heavier bikes. Um, make sure you know where you're parking. All right. Now, what's next? Why? What other reasons can I give you to help you ride a cruiser just a little bit better? Um, your weight, again, your weight's really far down low, so you feel a little bit more comfortable riding. I'm five foot seven and three quarters, count that. And this cruiser actually and specifically does have a much higher seat height than most normal cruisers. So on the VTX, 
you can see here, I can't touch the ground unless I'm flat footing it down like this. I can't even touch the ground on this thing. But when I stand up, I can, and that's kind of cool. But remember that it's not a show of strength, it's a show of skill. When you're riding something this big, you wanna make sure that you have the skill to be able to operate this thing. Now, when it comes to a tip over, if I'm gonna tip over a thousand pound motorcycle, that's a different story. That requires strength and technique. If you guys don't know how to pick up a motorcycle, you don't just huh, grab it and yank it up. If this, I'm not gonna, t I would tip the VTX over because I know I can pick that up. This one, I don't know if I can pick up or not. Um, when you're going to pick up a motorcycle, let's say it's tilted over this way, I'm actually gonna grab a strong point on the motorcycle so the crash bar would be a good spot. I could grab, I don't know, grab a pipe, grab this, and you're gonna be, you're gonna pick with your lower back. You guys ever been to a warehouse? You guys ever seen a safety course lifting over 40 pounds? This is over 40 pounds. You're actually gonna grab it. Let's say it's tipped this way. I'm gonna grab it, grab it, and I'm gonna put all my strength in my lower back, and I'm gonna pull it up like that. Is it gonna work the first time? No. Are you gonna need to call the cops to help you out because you're a little, a little weak? Probably, but that's fine because you're gonna need help picking this thing up at some point um, in your life. And the people who say they've never gone down and will never go down, I hope you guys are right, but realistically, you're on this thing all summer, all year, you know, it's inevitable. So, honestly, those are the kind of, those are the bigger reasons why I figure uh, you could get better at riding cruisers, why heavy bikes aren't as scary for tiny people like me. I guess I'm not, I'm not really tiny in that aspect. The average male height's like five, ten and a half. But where I come from in the Hispanic land, that's, uh, that's pretty damn tall. So, yeah, these are why, those are kind of, that's a really big point I wanted to make about uh, riding a cruiser and making yourself more comfortable. Just remember, the weight is low. Remember, the weight is low. Remember, all your movement for your turns are here, okay? They're in your core. So make sure when you're turning the bike, Make sure you know that all that weight is in that core right here, okay? And then when you're going for low speed turns, remember, counter, counterbalance. You're not as heavy as the bike. You're not counterbalancing as in, I'm putting my weight here. You're doing it to show the bike that, hey, I can still stay upright while I'm moving. So when I'm turning to the left, I'm standing to the right. I'm turning to the right, I'm standing to the left. And the reason why I'm doing that only at low speeds, please only at low speeds, is because it gives you more confidence to be able to make a tighter turn. Um, that's very important when you're, when you're doing these low speed turns and these heavy bikes because you never really know. And if you don't feel comfortable with all the weight on the back of your bike and you don't feel comfortable with all this stuff, get rid of some of the stuff before you're gonna park it. I'll make anybody get the hell off my back seat before I park my bike because I know that that's the biggest chance we have of tipping over is when I'm in a low speed turning my bike, getting it set up, getting it parked, you know. So I'll get rid of this. I'll get rid of that. Maybe not, not as far as getting rid of the stuff, but don't feel, don't feel like a chicken for making your, uh, your passenger get off when you park the bike. It, it's totally fine. It makes sense. In most cases, they want to get off anyway. So these are my big reasons as to why, um, these are my big reasons as to why, oh my gosh, look how windy it is today, guys. Holy cow. Um, these are my reasons as to why cruisers uh, aren't as scary as they look. Um, I can turn the camera around again. I'm going to reverse it into that top spot so we can get a little look at that. I'm going to get gas on my way home because I need to get gas. So let's just go ahead. Remember, low, low speed, you're gonna be at a low speed. So you're gonna be counterbalancing, you're gonna be counterbalancing, there you go. Nice and quiet turn. There you go, let's just get up here. Okay, let's say I need to reverse in. I'm gonna check my, check my area, check my area. I'm gonna make sure I stay nice and close to the end. Nice quick turn. And then once I do that, don't mind my front brake. I'm gonna park the bike, put it in neutral. 
Make sure that the kickstand has a good place to sit. Again, even on these, these asphalts, you got holes and you got cracks and you got all this stuff. Um, let's say I want to do another U-turn. Let's say I want to get into, I don't know, a different spot. I'm going to show you. I'm going to go nice and slow. Nice and slow. I'm going to counterbalance. I'm going to counterbalance. Let's get, a, let's get another U-turn in here. There you go. Slow down, counterbalance. I'm tilting it through. And there you go. Let's say I want to get in front of you guys. Let's do a little turn, a little turn. And there you are. That's how you ride a big motorcycle. Uh, not really, but that's how I do it. And it's worked for me, so why wouldn't it work for you guys, right? Ugh. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, my ramblings about why a big bike isn't that scary. It's really not. It looks scary. It looks awesome, first of all. You know how many compliments I get being a 21 year old on this thing? Like, oh, you're not on that sport bike. You're not doing all that fast cross rocket stuff. You're just enjoying life. I am, but I also did do that back in my day. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this very dirty motorcycle, very dirty, it's been in the rain. I did about 600 miles yesterday. Uh, I went from uh, just west of Milwaukee down to uh, Chicago and up around to Michigan and then cut back through uh, Indiana and lower Illinois and came back up. Just get some miles on this thing. So if you guys uh, enjoyed my riding, please leave a like down in the comments or something like that. Say bye to Major. Major's got a new little necklace on him right now. Looks pretty snazz. Uh, yeah. See you guys in the next video. <laughs> Deuces, guys.